Well, now we're going to tackle something that's a little bit trickier, and that is to write a piecewise function. And the reason why I say it's a little bit trickier is because there's several steps that are involved. Um, so bear with me. Uh, this is actually the on example on page 102 in your textbook. This is example 2B. I'm not using 2A because I really don't like the way that graph is drawn. I think it's a little bit, you can solve it and write it, uh, but it takes a little bit more what I think is guesswork. This is a little bit clearer here, even though not tremendously so. So I've got a, I got three functions. And so remember a piecewise function, or I'm going to have three expressions. So a piecewise function is one in which uh, we've got two or more expressions. And in this case, this is all linear. So, well, let's see if we can't tackle this. So I'm going to focus first on the piece that is in the bottom left. And so I know I see I've got a line, but I'm going to have to determine this. I've got to write an equation uh, or expression for each one of these three pieces and put in the constraints. So let's focus here on this left. And so I've got a scale of two on both the X and the Y axis. And that's one reason it makes this a little bit trickier. And so I got to find the slope first. I and mean, then when I have to use the slope, after I find the slope, I'm going to have to use point slope to write the equation. So I've got a point right here where x is negative 1. When x is negative 1, y is negative 3. And that's this point right here. And let's go and look at this point right here. So at that point, when x is negative 2, what can I write that? Where x is negative 2, y is negative 6. So let's take this piece right now and let's find the slope of that. So we know our slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I've got my y2 here, see, is negative 6 minus y1 is negative 3 over x2 is negative 2 and x1 minus x1, which is negative 1. And, of course, these negative negatives are going to make these positives. And so what do we have then? We've got negative... 3, negative 3, negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And so I got a slope here of 3. Now, now that I have found the slope, I'm going to use point slope to actually write the expression. And so I can choose either one of these two coordinates. And so let's see, we got negative 1, negative 3. Let's use that. Let's see if I got enough room to squeeze it in down here. So I got y minus negative 3 using point slope equals 3 times x times minus x1, which is negative 1. All right, so then we got y plus 3. I'm not going to have enough room here, but and then we got 3x. And this becomes a positive, plus 3. So I've got y plus 3 equals 3x plus 3. And let me carry this up right here. So then when I subtract 3 from both sides, I just got y equals 3x. Okay, so that is the left lower left piece that is part of my expression. All right, now let's move to the second piece. And so I've got to, I've got to determine the slope again. And so I've got a couple of coordinates. I've got one right here. 
one right here which says when x is negative 1, y is equal to 1, and then I got a point right here at the origin, 0, 0. Uh, pick that one to make that a little bit easier. So, all right, so we got one point. Let's call this number 1. Expression number 1. We're going to work now on expression number 2. And we still have to do the constraints. So let's see. I've got a point at negative 1, 1. And I've got a point at 0, 0. All right, well, let's go ahead and do the slope. So I got 0 minus 1 over 0 minus negative 1. Well, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And 0 ne minus negative 1 is plus 1. So I've got a slope of negative 1. Turn off that ringing phone. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to use point slope again to uh, be able to write the expression. And that's actually pretty easy because this particular one passes through the origin. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Let's, so let's see if I set this up. Let's say I want to use that coordinate right there, 0, 0. I got y minus 0 equals negative 1 or negative times x minus zero and so what do we have what do we have what do we have so i got uh, x i mean y minus zero equals negative x or negative negative one times negative zero there is no negative zero it's zero and so y is just going to equal negative x so my second piece then is y equals negative x my first one was y equals 3x. All right, now let's start to work on the third piece. So I've got a point right here so that when x is, let's see, 3, when x is 3, not negative 3, 3, when x is 3, y is 4, and I'm going to go down here where x is, look at that point right there, where x is 8, y is negative 1. All right, so we got the coordinates. This is number 3, where when x is 3, y is 4, and I got another point where x is 8, y is negative 1. Let's find our slope. So we got negative 1 minus 4, y2 minus y1. And then x2 minus x1 is 8 minus 3. And then, so negative 1, negative 4 is negative 5. 8 minus 3 is 5. And so again, I've got negative 1 is my slope. But I've got to write the expression, so I'm going to use point slope, and I'm going to use this 3, 4 coordinate. So I've got y minus 4 equals, that's y minus y1 times the slope, which is negative 1. I'm just going to write the negative. x minus 3. All right, so we've got y minus 4 equals negative x. And negative 1 times th negative 3 is positive 3. And let's add 4 to both sides. And so we've got y equals negative x plus 7. All right, so there are our three equations, if you will, but then we got to build in the constraints. And so I'm going to take this over to the next slide. Let's see, we had y equals 3x, y equals negative x, and then negative x plus 7. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to say here that f of x is equal to, and we've got our constraints. So our first one, first we had 3x, and then we had negative x, and then we had negative x plus 7. And let's build in our constraints. So let's look at negative 3 here. Negative 3, I mean the first one where we got 3x. All right, so what's happening with x here? 
Well, in this case, x is negative 1, and it goes on out to infinity, or negative infinity, I should say. So we go from negative 1 to infinity, but i got an open dot here. And so my constraint then is x, well, let me change color. x is less than negative 1. That takes care of that piece. All right, now in the middle section where we got a, our equation is just negative x, but what about our constraints? Well, I've got one right here where x is negative 1. And then, so x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And then I've got a constraint here an open dot where x is equal to 3. So let's see, how do I write this? Well, when x is, ne so if negative 1, if x is greater and just greater than x, so x is greater than negative 1, but x has also got to be uh, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to, negative 1, but x is also going to be less than 3. So that's the constraint on that piece. Now let's go to the third. Alright, so right here where x is equal to 3, and then that goes on out to infinity. So we can say then for this third piece, if x is greater than or equal to 3. Wow. That takes a little bit of perseverance. And if you're going to become good at that, you'd have to be persistent in your practice. And man, I tell you what, you better be patient or you're going to lose it. Writing piecewise defined functions.